Welcome to Excel and Business Math video number 15. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about multiplying fractions, dividing fractions, and even a little bit about dividing and units. Now we're going to see how to do all of these by hand and then a little bit in Excel. All right, now we're going to go over to PowerPoint to see how to do these calculations by hand. All right, first we want to look at how to multiply fractions. It's pretty straightforward. You multiply the numerators, the denominators, and if it needs to be reduced, you reduce it. Our example is going to be, hey, we're going to take 6 divided by 8 and multiply it by 2 times 12. Well, we'll say equals, draw a long bar, and I simply multiply the numerator 6 times 2 and then multiply the denominators 8 times 12. Now, I could just do straight multiplication. That would be 12 and 96. But I'm going to do some canceling here. I see there's a 6 there, so I'm going to leave a 1. Guess what? There's a 6 in there. How many? 2. Now I see a 2 in the denominator and the numerator. So look at that. I'm left with 1 over 8. So multiplying fractions is straightforward. Just multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and reduce. Now let's go to the next slide. Dividing fractions simply has one extra step. At the beginning, we invert or flip the second fraction, the denominator. Then we multiply, then we reduce. So if I'm taking 6 divided by 12, and I'm going to divide that by 1 half. Well, guess what? I get to flip the second fraction, the denominator. So 6 divided by 12, that stays exactly the same. Now we multiply, and I invert. So then I get 6 times 2 over 12 times 1. Oh, before I do that, why don't we do this? How many 6's are in 6? There's 1. How many 6's are in 12? Oh, look at that, 2. So we're left with some number over that same sum number, which, of course, anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's that magic number, 1. Now I want to go to the next slide and talk about units. Sue and Abdi drove nonstop for 3,000 miles and drove 60 miles per hour the whole trip. How long did it take them to drive 3,000 miles? Now, we're not going to do this as a word problem and set everything up, but we are going to write down our variables. Number of miles was 3,000. Speed equals 60 miles. Notice both numbers have miles as unit, but this one has per hour. Well, remember that per, that means division. Now, in order to find out how fast they were driving, I need to take 3,000 miles and divide by the number of miles per hour. But watch what happens when we do this. And we're going to keep the unit, so miles divided by, I'm going to write 60 miles. And I'm going to do a division bar, because remember, per, per hour, that's one hour. What really happens when I do this is I could rewrite this. 3,000 miles divided by 60 miles per one hour. Notice this is division, so we can invert the second fraction or the denominator. So down here, I'm going to say, hey, 3,000 miles. And I could have a 1 here. Any number over 1 is itself. But now I'm going to use multiplication, and I have to flip this. So 1 hour over 60 miles. I'm running out of space here. I'm going to say equal, and I'm going to Rewrite this, 3,000, I'm going to use an M times 1 hour over, and I'm going to leave the 1 and just put 60 miles. Now, we want to reduce the numbers, 
So we're going to have to break apart the 60 and the 3,000 into some factors we can cancel. But we also want to learn that we can cancel units. Now, hey, let's do this trick. Hey, there's a 0, there's a 0. That means we're canceling a 10 in the numerator and the denominator. But we're totally allowed to cancel units. If they're in the numerator and denominator, they cancel. So we're left with 300 hours divided by 60. Notice how that's convenient. The miles canceled out. The real answer to our question really is in hour. Remember, how long did it take them to drive 3,000 miles? But we still have a little bit of work to do. So I'm going to say equals. How many sixes are in 300? Well, I don't know for sure, but I do know 6 times 5 is 30, right? So 6 times 50. No, wait a second, we weren't supposed to have that. Divided by 6, and I have the hours up here. Now we can cancel the 6, and there's our answer. So it took them 50 hours, and I guess I better put an S there. So here we saw an example of dividing fractions, inverting, and multiplying. So we saw multiplying again, and then we saw that we're allowed to cancel not only factors like our 6, 6, but also units. All right, now we want to go over to Excel and take a look at multiplying and dividing fractions in Excel. Now over here in Excel, we're on the sheet Multiply and Divide. Multiplying, pretty straightforward. We have 1 half times 1 fourth. I simply make a formula and multiply the first one times the second one. Now when I enter this, the cell references, of course, are going to pull the number formatting. So when I Control Enter, it shows me that as a fraction, that's number formatting. When you're multiplying, the operation is easy. Just make sure that you're displaying it with the correct reduced fraction. Now dividing, 6 twelfths divided by 1 half. Well, if we apply our rule, then we flip the second one, the denominator, and simply multiply. 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 1 is 12. So if we were to multiply these times the inverted or flipped one, we would get 12 over 12. If we did the formula again times this one, now it's going to pull through the cell references the number formatting. But I can come right up to number group and apply general. And sure enough, any number divided by itself is 1. Uh, in Excel, though, we don't have to flip the second fraction and then multiply. We can simply do our division. There's the first one divided by the second one. And as long as we make sure that the number is displayed as a reduced fraction, we're good to go. All right, that's just a little bit about multiplying and dividing fractions here in Excel. And over by hand, we also talked about canceling units, not just factors when they're both in the numerator and denominator. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video number 16, we'll talk about adding and subtracting fractions. All right, we'll see you next video.